Hello everyone, it's Hannah here from Virtually Fluent. Welcome to today's video where we're talking all about indirect questions in English. It's a tricky topic and completely different really to asking direct normal questions, which we've learned through so many of our tense videos so far. So let's take a look at the rules of indirect questions. So we are going to look at these two examples. How are you? And could you tell me how you are? The first question is what we call a direct question because I'm speaking directly to you. I'm asking you how you are. The second question is what we call indirect. I'm still talking to you. I'm still asking you for information, but it's not just that question that I'm using. I am inserting this little question into a larger phrase. We use this larger phrase to be a lot more polite, to ask for favors and requests, and generally to speak with that higher level, that more formal level of language. For that reason, we use these indirect questions. Now I've written reported speech here with a little asterisk because there are some similarities really in terms of the structure and how we create these particular indirect questions, but the actual grammatical function is completely different. We have a totally separate video already in our previous playlists on reported speech. So to learn the correct structure of indirect questions, let's take a look at these two examples. Could you tell me how you are? And do you know if she's okay? So both of these structures are different, but they start the same. They both have these things called question phrases. And these are the phrases that push us to use indirect questions. I have a nice long list of the most typical indirect question phrases, these, these question phrases for indirect speech. Uh, you can find this in our indirect questions course online. I've left the link to that in the description below. But now we start to differ between these two different structures. So in the first example, the next word you can see is how, which is a question word. Then you can see you, which is our subject. And finally, you can see our verb this is pushed after the subject. So our full structure for this particular indirect question is question phrase, question word, subject, and then our verb. Now it's important to note that you may see some different variations of this question word. Sometimes with how you will see an adjective following after this. For example, how old, how big, how small, how long. After what, you might see a noun. This is exactly the same for which and also whose. But regardless, that is the structure that we use for indirect questions. Just be wary of the different types of verbs that we have. If we have a modal verb, this also goes at the end. So after our subject, we have our modal verb and then our normal infinitive verb. And here is an example where I've expanded that question word which to add a noun as well. Could you tell me which attractions we could, modal verb, visit infinitive verb? And it's also exactly the same with auxiliary verbs. They're also pushed to the end. For example, could you tell me where he has, auxiliary verb, gone, our second main verb? Or could you tell me where he is going? It doesn't matter what tense you want to use, but we must follow this structure with auxiliary verbs. So how is our second question structure any different? Because it starts the same. It starts with a question phrase. But now we want to insert the word if or whether. Then we follow again with our subject and finally our main verb. Do you know if she is okay? So this structure is our question phrase, then if or whether, then our subject, and then our main verb. Now the reason this is different is because we don't have a question word here. Those question words, who, what, where, when, why, how, all of those, if we don't have any of those, we need to insert if or whether before our indirect question. If they do have a question word, then we need to use the other question structure which we just looked at before. When it comes to modal verbs, it's exactly the same. Put modal verb plus infinitive at the end after our subject as if it's a normal affirmative sentence. For example, do you know if she can drive? 
and we can replace that word if with whether as well. Do you know whether he might visit me? When it comes to auxiliary verbs, it's exactly the same. Replace that modal for the auxiliary. We can use this in any tense that we want. Now, in both of these cases, we've thought immediately in indirect questions, which is great if you can create those questions without translating from direct. However, many grammar exercises, many activities from teachers, and also many exams may require you to convert direct to indirect questions. Now, essentially, this is exactly the same as what we've just done, but we must be careful with two tenses with the present simple and with the past simple. So let's take this nice, simple, present simple question. Where does he work? Okay, let's put this into indirect speech. So I have chosen the question phrase, I would like to know, but you can choose any question phrase you like. Then we copy our question word, which is where. Then we copy our subject, which is he. And now we get to the verb. Now, in our direct question, we have an auxiliary verb, does, and then we have our main verb, work. We only want the main verb in indirect questions. So let's take that word, work, but we need to conjugate it now because it's he is the subject before. So I would like to know where he works. So you can see in the present simple tense when you're converting from direct to indirect questions, it's actually pretty tricky. Let's do exactly the same with this question. Who do you like? I would like to know who you like. And this is also exactly the same in the past simple tense. We want to eliminate that did. We don't need it in indirect questions. Just take that main verb. Could you tell me where he went? And watch out because actually we need the past simple tense. So if it's an irregular verb, it will probably change. So now is the time to look at some of the warnings with indirect questions. The first thing is to be careful with question marks. Indirect questions themselves don't require question marks. However, some of the indirect question phrases, for example, can you tell me, could you tell me, do require question marks. Some other phrases which are more commanding, such as I would like to know, please tell me, don't require question marks. So you really need to understand what kind of question phrase you're using, whether it requires a question mark or not. The second thing is to be aware of the word order, especially with the verb to be. I see so many state mistakes with the verb to be. For example, could you tell me where is the shop? No, it doesn't follow the indirect question structure. Start with the question phrase, could you tell me? Question word, where? Next is the subject, the shop. And finally, our verb is, could you tell me where the shop is? And this is so common if you are a tourist and you are asking somebody where something is. Excuse me, could you tell me where blah -de blah is? So please be careful with the correct word structure, word order, especially with the verb to be. The next thing is just to be careful with the two words whether or if. Generally, whether is used in a lot more formal circumstances and if is a lot more informal. There are tiny, tiny differences in meaning as well. However, in this particular context, generally they're used in the same way. The next little thing I would like to look at is where we can actually replace the subject with the word to in English before our main verb. This is very informal and it's a really nice way of boosting that native level vocabulary. For example, let's take the sentence, I was wondering how I lock the door. Nice, simple, indirect question, follows all of our rules, check, check, check. However, we can replace that I, the subject, with actually with the word to instead. I was wondering how to lock the door. And you can use this pretty much with any question word, not just how, and it's a really nice, easy way to express an indirect question. And the final little thing that we need to be aware of is that who has two different meanings or two different functions. Of course, it's a question word, we know that. For example, who does he like? Our subject in this sentence is actually he, he like, and who is just our question word. So when we convert this into an indirect question, it follows that structure. We have a question word present. 
It's structure one. I was wondering who he likes. Now let's change the question. Let's say who ate the chocolate. Now in this particular sentence, who has become the subject of the sentence? It's not really a question word. So when who is used as a subject and not as a question word, then actually we want to rewrite our indirect questions. We just write who, and that takes up the place of the subject, but we do not need to insert the if or the whether, because who has, it's like a double function. It takes the place of the question word and the subject together. So who ate the chocolate would then become, I was wondering who ate the chocolate. No ifs, no whethers, and no extra subjects in there either. So just be careful with the word who. So in conclusion, you can see the different structures that we use for questions, indirect questions with and without question words. It's really important to learn these as well as all those phrases that start to introduce our indirect questions. It's a really great way to talk with a high level in English. So that's everything we need to know about indirect questions in English. If you learned something new, go ahead and like today's video, give us a thumbs up. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see when all of our new videos drop. You probably need to hit the notification bell so you know exactly when our new videos come up on our YouTube channel. And also check out that course, that indirect questions course. There's some online games, activities, quizzes, just so you can practice using indirect questions really well in English. That's everything for today. This is Hannah from Virtually Fluent, bringing English to life.